A very warm welcome to all of you. Myself, Professor Nagareses from KG Somaya College, Kopadgao. In this current lecture, we are going to study some important topics from Chapter 2. The topics which we are going to cover in this lecture are first important point is density and specific gravity of solutions. Second is chemical stoichiometry. The third one is empirical and molecular formula. And the fourth one is determination of empirical and molecular formula. So let us start this lecture with the first important point, density and specific gravity of solutions. The density and specific gravity of solutions are commonly used terms in analytical chemistry. These terms are commonly used in analytical chemistry. Now what is the meaning of these two terms? So the first term is density of a substance. Now density of a substance is its mass per unit volume. We know very well that the density of a substance can be calculated with the help of mass equal to density by volume. This simple relation is there. This density of substance can be expressed in the units like kilograms per liter, grams per milliliter or it is a cubic centimeter. The second term is specific gravity. Specific gravity of a substance is the ratio of its mass to the mass of equal volume of water at 4 degrees centigrade. So if we take this ratio of its mass to the mass of equal volume of water at 4 degrees centigrade, it is called as the specific gravity of a substance. This specific gravity of a substance is a dimensionless quantity. So these are the two common terms used in a analytical chemistry. The next important concept is a chemical stoichiometry. Now what is by chemical stoichiometry? The quantitative aspects dealing with mass and volume relationship between reactants and products is called as stoichiometry. So this is a quantitative aspects and in this quantitative aspects we can get an idea for with mass and volume relationship between the reactants and products. So if we correlate the relationship in terms of mass and volume between reactants and products, this quantitative aspect is called as the chemical stoichiometry. It gives the relationship among the number of moles of reactants and products as represented by balance chemical equation. So it gives the relationship between the number of moles of reactants and products in a balanced chemical equation. It has following applications to the chemical calculations. So this chemical stoichiometry has some applications. So what are that applications? So let us look towards that applications. The first one is empirical formula. Now, what is by this empirical formula? It is very important in a balance chemical reaction. Now, it gives the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element present in a molecule or chemical compound. So, this empirical formula gives us a simplest whole number ratio of atoms that are of each element present in a molecule or chemical compound. Example, CH is the empirical formula of benzene. It indicates that benzene is composed of carbon and hydrogen in the ratio of 12 as to 1 by weight. So this is a simple empirical formula term. Two or more compounds may have the same empirical formula. The compound C6H12O6 and CH3COOH have same empirical formula that is CH2O. So if we take into consideration these two compounds that is a glucose and acetic acid. These two compounds, chemical compounds have the same empirical formula as CH2O. The next important term is molecular formula. Now what is by this molecular formula? It indicates the actual number of atoms of each element present in one molecule or it gives number of atoms in a molecule. So according to the molecular formula, we get an idea regarding the number of atoms of each element present in a molecule or it gives the number of atoms in the molecule. So that is nothing but the molecular formula. Two or more substances may have the same empirical formula but different molecular formula. For example, if we take into consideration CH2O is both the empirical and molecular formula for formaldehyde. If we take the chemical compound formaldehyde, it have the same value of empirical as well as the molecular formula and that is CH2O. The molecular formula is calculated as, in order to calculate this molecular formula, we have to take the help of empirical formula. So this molecular formula is equal to N into empirical formula, where this N is equal to 
a ratio of molecular formula weight divided by empirical formula weight so by taking that ratio into consideration it is called as en and that en we take in this calculation of molecular formula the next important concept is determination of empirical and molecular formula now as far as this empirical and molecular formulas are to be considered how to determine these formulas so for this purpose some steps are commonly used the following steps are followed to determine the empirical formula of the compound the first important step is the percentage composition of compound is determined by quantitative analysis now this percentage composition of the compound is nothing but the what are the constituents present in a particular compound what are the different elements so that type of the percentage composition can be determined by the quantitative analysis the percentage of each element is divided by its atomic weight so we if we have a percentage of each element then we have to divide that percentage of each element by its atomic weight it gives atomic ratio of the elements present in the compound so by which we get the atomic ratio of the elements present in the compound the atomic ratio of each element is divided by the minimum value of atomic ratio as to get simplest ratio of atoms of elements now once we get the atomic ratio of each element then it is divided by the minimum value of atomic ratio as to get the simplest ratio of atoms of elements so this is the third step in the first step if the simplest ratio is fractional then values of simplest ratio of each element are multiplied by a smallest integer to get a simplest whole number for each element suppose if we get a simplest ratio as a fractional value so at that time we have to multiply these ratios by smallest integer number to get the simplest whole number for each element the step 5 is to get the empirical formula symbols of various elements are written side by side with their respective whole number ratio as a subscript to the lower right hand corner of the symbol so once we get the particular whole number ratio for each element then we have to write the symbols of each and every element and toward this symbol we have to write the subscript on the right hand side and this subscript written this total users an idea regarding the empirical formula the molecular formula may be determined from the empirical formula if the molar mass of the substance is known now the molecular formula may be determined with the help of this empirical formula if molar mass of the substance is known so if we know the molar mass of the substance it is very easy for us to know its molecular formula the molecular formula is always a simple multiple of empirical formula and the value of simple multiple is obtained by dividing molar mass with empirical formula mass so we can determine the empirical and molecular formula by following these seven different steps so by following these steps we may convert or we may determine the empirical and molecular formula of a given compound now let us look towards the determination of this type of the empirical formula so for this purpose let us consider this simple numerical a compound contains 34.8 g of oxygen 52.2% carbon and 30 13% hydrogen calculate the empirical formula mass of the compound so for this purpose the given data is there molar mass of carbon is equal to 12 g per mole for oxygen it is a 16 g per mole and for the hydrogen it is a 1 g per mole now for the conversion of or for the calculation of this empirical formula we have to follow the seven different steps which we just studied in the last slide so first of all these elements present in this compound are oxygen carbon and hydrogen now in the second column we write here the percentage weight which is already given in a numerical so percentage of oxygen is 34.8 percentage weight for carbon is a 52.2 and for hydrogen it is a 13 now in the third column we have to write the molar mass of atom which is already given in the numerical for oxygen it is a 16 for carbon it is a 12 and for hydrogen it is a 1 now in the next column we have to find out the relative number of atoms of each and every element so for this purpose what we have to do we have to divide this percentage weight of each and every element by their respective molar mass of atom so in this way for this oxygen it is a 34.8 divided by 16 for carbon it is 52.2 divided by 12 and for hydrogen it is 
divided by 1. If we divide these percentage weight by the respective molar mass of an atom, we get relative number of atom. So for oxygen, it is obtained as 2.175, for carbon it is 4.35 and for the hydrogen it is a 13. Now these ratios are in a fractional value, that's why we have to divide these relative number of atoms by the smallest ratio and that smallest ratio is a 2.175. So the simplest ratio can be obtained as 2.175 divided by 2.175, it is equal to 1. The 4.35 divided by again by the smallest ratio number, it is a 2.175. So 4.35 divided by 2.175 is equal to 2. And 13 divided by 2.175 is equal to 5.99. It is approximately equal to the 6. So in this way, we get the we get the simplest ratio as 1, 2, and 6. Therefore, the empirical formula for the given compound is C2H6O. This is the empirical formula. And from this empirical formula, we may calculate the empirical formula mass as empirical formula mass is equal to 2 into 12 gram per mole. This is nothing but the number of atoms of carbon multiplied by their molar mass of atom plus 6 into 1. This is a 6 stands for number of hydrogen atoms multiplied by 1 as a molar mass of hydrogen atom plus 1 into 16 gram per mole. This 1 stands for oxygen atom multiplied by the molar mass of oxygen atom. So if we add together all this contribution, the value obtained is 46 gram per mole and this is nothing but the empirical formula mass of the given compound. So by observing this numerical carefully, it is very easy for us to <coughs> find out or to determine the empirical formula mass as well as the empirical formula of a given compound by following the simple steps. So in this lecture, we come across the different important terms from the chapter number second as what is by density and specific gravity of a substance, what is been by empirical and molecular formula, how to convert this empirical and molecular formula, how to calculate this empirical and molecular formula, what are the different steps for the remaining points from the chapter we will study in the next lecture. I hope you understand these concepts in this lecture very well. Those who are not yet subscribe my channel, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming video lectures. So with this, I stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much.